Good afternoon and welcome to NTD Canada News Election Special Series. I'm your host, Gary Bai. We went to the streets of Toronto and asked people what their thoughts are about mandatory vaccination. Some think mandatory vaccination are not required as long as herd immunity is reached. Others, not so much. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau's campaign has been dogged by angry protesters who are against mandatory vaccination. So far, the heated protests have not been violent. However, nobody seems to be interested in finding out exactly why these people are so angry. Accounting for approximately $174 billion, or more than 10% of Canada's GDP, the manufacturing industry is a cornerstone of the Canadian economy. The decision of Canadians in this pandemic election will be pivotal in shaping the recovering market, say industry professionals. Speaking in Quebec on Monday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau promised to help conserve Canada's freshwater resources. In Granby, Quebec, Trudeau outlined his party's promise to invest $1 billion over the 10 years for the restoration and protection of freshwater resources. The plan also calls for the modernization of the Canada Water Act. Meanwhile, Aaron O'Toole talked to residents in the Greater Toronto Area on Monday on how he has a credible plan to slash greenhouse gas emissions. During his announcement in Ottawa and BC, Jack May Singh said he would zero in on tax evasion and close loopholes that benefit billionaires. And Yves-François Blanchet held two press front conferences yesterday. One was about immigration and the second was about gun control. In the last episode, we covered the party's takes on vaccine passports and the legal challenges the government might face when imposing the mandate. Yesterday, we went out on the streets of Toronto to see what Canadians think about the matter. Some think mandatory vaccinations are not required as long as herd immunity is reached. Others, not so much. Brad Boucher reporting. With federal elections well underway and political parties rolling out their campaigns across the nation, we're here today asking the public what they have to say about mandatory vaccinations, any questions and concerns that they may have. I feel like it shouldn't be mandatory. So it's like people have to choose it whether they want it or not. I don't like it. I don't like the mandatory vaccination. Okay. I'm not going to get the third, the third dose if they're going to announce that people should get the third dose. I, I guess I guess we can we can have you know we've had a lot of mandatory you know vaccinations or other things in the past so if you look at like smallpox or other events that have happened then we've vaccinated like the population um, a very fringe uh, few uh, went against it um, and that was okay because you still got you know your herd immunity and uh, uh, generally the population was protected against these diseases and these diseases eventually were eradicated so um, uh, fundamentally, I think, you know, we, what we should try to do is encourage as many people to get vaccinated as possible and mandate it for things like travel or, uh, you know, uh, attending public schools or attending universities or going back into a workforce, uh, driving for Uber or whatever, right? So you're, for you're... Universities, for example, I mean, right now, U of T, Western, all these universities, they're mandating vaccines for students and for staff. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's a great idea. I mean, I don't think it's necessary to have mandatory vaccination. I think um, it's like, depending on the numbers, if there's enough people who are vaccinated and, you know, it's a pretty big percentage, I don't think it needs to be mandatory for everybody. Um, but then again, like in theory, is that going to happen or do people need to get pushed to get vaccinated? So it's, it's tough to figure out. Inherently, you wouldn't want to force people to do things. But at the same time, um, and, and, you know, like if, if, you've, if you're above a certain percentage of enough people being double dosed or whatever, like enough immunization against the, the, the virus, yes. uh, it should be enough for most people to be safe from the virus. And even in that case, the ICU levels and hospital levels will be vacant enough to allow for the off cases where certain people are affected heavily if they're not already vaccinated. Um, but if, if that excuse keeps getting used for everybody, then we might not have enough people vaccinated. So it can go either way. Well, the fact that the, the many people that are not vaccinated are getting the virus at increased levels, as opposed to the people that are vaccinated, it seems to be you're, it's happening at a lower rate. Yes. As well, um, I would say, uh, yeah, it's about keeping everyone safe because when you're vaccinated, you're keeping your neighbors, family, friends. It's not really all about you. It's about all of us. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau's campaign has been dogged by protesters who are against mandatory vaccinations. 
Over the past few days, protesters disrupted Trudeau's election rallies, at one point forcing him to cancel an event. A National Post columnist who covered federal politics for two decades said that he has never seen the kind of furious indignation directed at a politician as that aimed as Trudeau at the campaign events in Ontario. The protesters have been called out by mainstream media, pundits calling them, and all others political parties distance themselves from these protesters while condemning them. So far, the heated and loud protests have now been violent. However, nobody seemed to be interested in finding out why these people are so angry. Columnist and business owner Corey Morgan hoped to see people try and offer a little understanding of what has led to these protests. He said, quote, These are people who genuinely feel that vaccines will cause themselves immediate or long-term harm. They feel hounded, harassed, and cornered as their ability to travel, work, or keep their children in school may be taken away if they don't submit to vaccination. They may feel that their choices are A, to have a toxic injection, or B, to become unemployed and essentially locked into their home. Whether one shares that view on vaccinations or not, can you imagine the pressure and stress people with that mindset are feeling right now? Morgan said the protests and heckling at political events are symptoms of a larger and growing problem. How can we respectfully accommodate the sizable segment of our population who will refuse to accept vaccination under any circumstance? Dismissing them or threatening them with unemployment won't help. That approach could cause a person to go from simply angry and frightened to outright dangerous. Protests against mandatory vaccination have also occurred in a number of other major Canadian cities. With the prospect of widespread vaccination mandates and passports coming into effect in various jurisdictions across Canada, people took to the streets in Toronto and Montreal to protest against such measures. This past Saturday, organized by professionals from the healthcare, education and police sectors, thousands of people marched on in Montreal to protest against upcoming vaccine mandates imposed by the Quebec government. Since the beginning of March 2020, these professionals have been silenced. They have been scolded for questioning the health measures. Protest organizers, Rainful COVID Quebec and Canadian frontline nurses wrote in a Facebook post. Starting September 1st, Quebecers will use vaccination passports to access non-essential services. Residents in British Columbia will face by far the most stringent proof-of-vaccination systems in Canada after September 13th. According to the BC Provincial Health Officer, no exemptions would be granted to the unvaccinated, including those with rare medical conditions who are unsuitable for vaccination to access certain non-essential locations or services when the vaccine card is implemented. She argued that the move will help the province to get through a risky period of increased COVID-19 cases. A petition to abolish the proof of vaccination system in BC was launched and had garnered 40,000 signatures. Whether vaccinated or not, medical segregation should cause concern for every individual in British Columbia. It is a clear violation of human rights, and once we lose these rights, it will be very difficult to get them back, wrote Lawrence Hansen, who initiated the petition. Vaccinated citizens are still giving and getting COVID and ending up in the hospital. Iceland and Israel are examples of this where a third shot is being administered in order to consider yourself vaccinated and with no data to back up whether this will be effective or not. While well, you need to keep getting shots to be able to access non-essential activities and when will this end? Accounting for approximately $174 billion or more than 10% of Canada's GDP, the manufacturing industry is a cornerstone of the Canadian economy. It currently supports more than 10% of Canadian jobs and represents 68% of Canada's merchandise exports. For the Canadian manufacturers and exports, Canada's largest trade and industry association, the industry's overall hopes to see the following changes made by a new government. Hiring more workers in manufacturing, investing in innovative technologies, increasing Canadian exports, and pursuing an industry net zero strategy. Now let's take a closer look at what each party is promising to rejuvenate Canadian manufacturing in its pandemic recovery plan. Starting with the Conservatives, the party said that outsourcing jobs to, quote, countries we cannot rely on during an emergency puts the health and safety of Canadians at risk. Therefore, it would only pursue free trade agreements with free countries that respect workers' rights and maintain high environmental standards. It will also ensure that government procurement of critical supplies, such as personal protective equipment and pharmaceuticals, favors Canadian producers. 
The Conservatives said that they will also go big on zero-emission vehicles. A billion dollars will be spent on developing and manufacturing electric vehicles and battery production, and another billion dollars will be spent on hydrogen technology development. The Trudeau Liberals are focused on getting cleaner energy into Canada's market. Speaking in Cambridge, Ontario, the Prime Minister promised Canadians that if re-elected, the Liberal government will revamp the market to prioritize clean businesses, such as electric vehicle and battery manufacturing. To do this, the Liberals actually promised to reduce corporate income tax rate by 50% for zero-emission technology manufacturers. With the NDP, Jack Singh called for a national industrial strategy to encourage and expand Canadian manufacturing capacity in numerous industries. These include auto, aerospace, shipbuilding, construction materials, pharmaceuticals, personal protective equipment, and the steel and aluminum industries. The party platform does not go into the dollar amount that it would invest in manufacturing, however. Lastly, neither the Green Party nor the People's Party talk explicitly about manufacturing policies. Nonetheless, it can be expected that the Green Party, similar to the Liberals, would seek to invest in green businesses, while the People's Party would lean towards protecting the Canadian manufacturing industry. Nearly a quarter of Canadians say that heading to the polls is dangerous. That's because COVID-19 cases are rising, and Canada is officially in the fourth wave of the pandemic. A new Ipsos survey says that across all party lines, people who are going to vote for the Conservative Party tend to feel the safest, 74%, to cast their ballots in person. Those who intend to vote for the Green Party are more likely to feel anxious. Across all provinces, people who live in Alberta tend to feel the safest, 73%. Those living in Saskatchewan and Manitoba are more likely to feel worried. To avoid the spread of COVID, some people are thinking that they will mail in their ballots. But the survey shows that only 16% of Canadians will vote by mail. These numbers come from 1,500 Canadians who responded online between August 20th and 23rd. In Air Gurney's poll tracker, yesterday's numbers indicate the Conservatives have risen slightly, whitening their lead over the Liberals that have dropped slightly. The Conservatives are at 33.4%, an increase of 0.4%, while the Liberals are at 31.5%, a decrease of 0.3%. There is an additional worry for the Liberals as their seat advantage is also shrinking. The New Democrats are at 19.8%, the Bloc Québécois at 6%, and the Green Party at 4.1%, and the other groups at 5.2%. The Greens and the Bloc Québécois are also experiencing less support than in 2019, and the People's Party is ahead of the Greens nationwide. With that said, thank you for watching NTD Canada News. If you like this video, please give us a like and share. It will help more people see your channel. We'll be back with more comprehensive election coverage, and we'll see you next time.